and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today we're going out doing some power on stalls. So jump into the link here, grab a coffee and strap in. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in next plane 11. Props, jets and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. Well here we are back at Sunny Gawler in the Lancare. This is a really great aeroplane if you haven't got it. It's another freebie, so um, feel free to get out there and download it. Quite um, sensitive as you slow down this one. Very much the sports aeroplane certainly. So. Let's get ourselves out there. We've already got everything all set up. Altimeters and all the other basic stuff is already turned on. Don't think we need to go through that every time. But I think we will uh, We will do it when we do more complete flights. So I'm going to focus today on this power on stalls. Okay, what are power on stalls? And why are they different to the stalls we did in the previous video, which were power off stalls? Well, the names really is a bit of a giveaway. But... They both happen at different places. The power off stalls most commonly happen when you are approaching the runway to land. Power on stalls are most commonly associated with and also called departure stalls because they are on your departure or takeoff. So like always, let's check around the circuit, make sure it's clear. Um, there seems to be a little bit of uh, update work done by Lamina here. Now, I've got uh, some uh, ortho zoom level 19 sitting around the airports here and, and other airports around the Gawler area. So let's do the run up quickly. So we're going to run it up to 1700. I've just picked that as a random figure. And we're going to check that the RPM drops off and then recovers as we put turn it back on. Turn it off to the second of the two magnetos see it drop off and then come back up and return back so we know everything's working fine we know there's a slight difference between both of the magnetos so that's all ready to go check our instruments are all in the green we're all nice and warmed up and ready to go we've got our flaps at first stage our altimeters are all set and we've got everything on now let's just turn up that pump on i think it actually has two pumps i need to download the pilot operating manual on this one and be a little bit more accurate on the aircraft this is certainly one i've never flown this is uh, very much a high performance aircraft so let's get ourselves rolling call the traffic link here rolling on runway uh, 31 doesn't it look nice from outside try and keep stable keep those rudders working remember you're going to have the p factor trying to push you left we have a slight wind from uh, just to our right, so it's about 340, it's about 7 knots or so, nothing major. So I haven't worried too much about the, the controls and the wind correction. So here we go, nice and smooth, heading out. Coming up to about the 70 knots there and just rotating out. This is a bit quicker than the Jabberos I normally fly. We normally were off at 55 to 60. So what are we doing? Now this is another quick lesson within a lesson, I guess. Departing an airport, guys. How do you do it? One of the most common ways and the safest ways to depart an airport is not just continue to fly on a merry way, but to turn left in the circuit but continue to climb. Normally you would depart at 1,500 feet above the airport level. So here I've turned base, and that little dirt road is a good reference because I follow that down in the Jabiru when I'm back in Oz flying. So we turn left. This is a bit quicker, this aeroplane, so it's taken us out a little bit further. But we continue on the downwind leg, but continue to climb. And as we reach around about 1,500 feet AGL above ground level, then we depart overhead the airport. This gives us the best view of what's happening on the airport and around it and uh, everybody knows where we are and it's also a good point if you're doing your navigation and timing is really critical 
because starting over the top you can just turn your, your stopwatch on and you'll know how far it is and also you're sort of approaching your um, your cruising speed getting close to it anyway uh, in this situation so this thing cruises really quickly one of the biggest things is keeping up with the speed on it and it is as I said very sensitive so I'd spend a bit of time trying to level it out and just trim it I've got trim on my force, force feedback stick which is not doing much force feeding anymore sadly need a newie now another thing I'd like to just mention as well about VFR flying I see all you know I see a lot of people flying these flight simulators um, out there and they're so fixated on that bit of glass that you can see there that blue and brown bit really you need to have your eyes outside if you're doing VFR if you're doing IFR different thing you need to be watching those and if you're doing IFR you're probably in the clouds anyway or you would most likely be so that's when you really need to look inside there's a sandy creek out there out to the right you can go and play golf out there guys if you want I think we've got a couple of golf courses I used to buzz my old mate when he used to go out there on a Thursday for a game of golf I used to run over the top there at about 500 feet in the Jabiru let him know where I was it's a lot of fun in it this flying thing that's the main highway out to the left there heading over to Sydney from Adelaide and also to Melbourne so here we go first thing we got to do let's get our head back in the cockpit for the moment and think about what we're going to do so we're here to do power on stalls what are they again they are a climb at takeoff speed so what we need to do is firstly we need to check the area we need to do a, a clearing turn make sure there's no aircraft around make sure we're in a safe area and we're not over the top of some little township and we're also want to make sure that we're at a safe altitude which is generally regarded I think 3,000 feet or beyond um, gives you plenty of time to uh, recover should anything happen so we're doing a clearing chair turn to the left here checking out you can see Gaul is not too far away that's the big glass factory just out of Glawler. They used to be our reporting point until they decided we'd start using the dam, which is just down there where the, uh, the river kinks to the right and goes straight on. It's about there, so. Yeah. If I remove the ortho ave here with the latest update, um, Adelaide turns green. It's quite interesting, but I happen to like the clarity that this is at so let's keep going around so how are we going to do the the power on stall so as you would be doing normally um, on a takeoff roll you would be at your takeoff speed and takeoff configuration so we're going to initially slow down to what we would be if we were taking off say 60 70 knots and then we're going to apply full power and then we're going to put ourselves into a steep climb that we can't maintain and why can't you maintain it? Well, you've probably been distracted by someone in the cockpit or something's happened or your seat slipped backwards and you pull back on the stick or lots and lots of really silly things that could happen or maybe other serious things could happen and you could be distracted by someone not being, being unwell in your cockpit as you take off. So there we go. We got first stage flat. We're idling. We're coming back to take off speed approximately. We're probably a little bit on the slow side. Okay, so we're going to go to full power and we're going to pull the nose up and we're going to let it climb. So in a real aircraft, you would probably feel some buffet. It would just shudder a little bit in your hands. You'd feel it on the stick, but in the sim, you're most likely going to hear that first, which is your stall warning. So as soon as you hear the stall warning, that tells you that there's something seriously going wrong. And what you need to do is push the stick forward, maintain full power, and let yourself climb out and then continue on your flight after uh, getting your heart rate back down again because it certainly would cause you a bit of a stir I think so again let's try it again the whole point of this is the recovery guys if you want to come out and practice this in whatever aircraft that you you fly and it can be as an airliner as well guys it, it can happen so let's get full power let's get a nice climb attitude happening we're in takeoff config with about 10 degrees of flaps there. We've got a good climb. There's a stall warning. Let's 
let the aeroplane well I let, I'm gonna let the aeroplane fall a little bit in this one just to you can see how, how quickly you just wallow away if you keep holding it you just wallow and you don't want to do that because you will normally be maybe just a few hundred feet above the ground that's why we do this to safe altitude so the whole point again is as soon as you hear that stall warning nose down to level to level flight and you'll already be at full power so you don't need to do anything there so level flight trim out let yourself catch up let your airspeed climb and then continue gently uh, on your way would be what you would do next so that's it I think we might do uh, one more and then we'll head back and then you can rate me on my lanies again here we go power off again let our speed drop down and remember if you're a uh, please if you're not a uh, subscriber to the and you like what you see here at let's fly VN VFR please feel free to hit that subscribe button bang that bell so you uh, get updated as we release new videos so here we go power on nose up high now you want an attitude that you know that you're not going to be able to maintain there we go stick forward and back to level don't let the nose drop you want to make, don't want to lose any height because you will be close to the ground there we are flaps away and I think it's time to head back towards YGAW Gawla and we'll go back and do a landing back there but it wouldn't be a good flight if we didn't have a bit of fun on the way back in would it so let's get a little bit of speed happening and see what this baby can do you can see Gawler out ahead of us there just out to the right about uh, halfway up the clear part above the cowling it's out there it's really nicely detailed with the Zoom 19 guys. You got to, if you don't know how to do that, have a look. Here we go, up and over. Let's do a loop. Now we're inverted, so you pull back pretty tight initially as you get to the top. You release the pressure a little, so because you, you can get a buffet up the top there. And I only know this because I've watched videos, so I've never done this for real. Uh, LSA pilots don't do aerobatics, unfortunately. But we do get to fly, which is uh, which is enough. So let's try roll. Now, again, just from watching videos, this is <laughs> nothing that's instructional. Nose up above the horizon, and just simply push left, and uh, and you'll roll around, or push right, and you will go right. Everybody seems to put that little bit of pitch up when they do it. So maybe need to watch a few aerobatic instructional videos, so we can uh, have a bit more fun in the future. But for the moment, let's head back. Now, let's talk about where we want to be because it's so, so important. And one of my failings, especially when I first started flying, was keeping ahead of the aeroplane. This is something you need to do. And if you're flying a jet, well, it just becomes even harder. We need to slow down a little bit because we're too quick. And we want to get down to about 1,500 feet or so as we make our approach to the airport. And their plan will be to land on the runway that we took off, runway 31. And. Oh, up we go. Up we go. Stall. And bash those rudders. And we'll throw in a little. A little bit of a spin. It's fairly gentle, isn't it? Fairly gentle. So let's come back out of the. Okay, let's get ourselves lined up again. So we want to head back towards uh, towards the big bottle factory that I mentioned earlier. There it is, just ahead of us there, or just to the left of it. We do try and keep away from this that town as much as possible. And one of the big things with this new uh, ortho scenery that I've uh, that I produced is that the town now comes out further to the right where it didn't previously. So we've had some good updates as far as the ortho goes. So yeah, if you need to do it, guys. I highly recommend if you have a local airport, go ahead and uh, just do maybe a zoom 16 for the whole tile. Here we are coming down to around about the 1500. We have seven, 1700 at the moment, just descending. And uh, once you've done the one tile, go back into your ortho 
and uh, select the zoom tool which is on the first page you do need to select you have to go select a tile first the tile you want to build so you have to go there and highlight that and then the, the numbers will come up on that screen if you've done it before you'll know what I'm talking about so you'll have your your north and your easterly uh, location there you can just close that screen down go back to the ortho first page click on the customer scenery level and uh, and then you'll be presented with a map you do have to hit the preview button so it shows you a map otherwise you'll just look at a blank screen but once you get that up the screen will build it'll appear in front of you and then you can use I think it's control and click and you can put little squares down or you can use shift and click and you can draw a line which will connect same as you would in a paint program uh, I may have that the wrong way around it's been a little while since I've done that but uh, you can do that and you can have a zoom 19 right around your airport and then go out about four or five k's or so and uh, and then put another ring around there at a different level so with the the level intensity goes down and it just makes it enormously great it does this is just so you know it's just perfectly accurate to come in with your scenery so anyway let's get back to the landing and stop dribbling away on another subject so we're coming down runway 23 at the moment we're following it down just a little to the right I did lose a little bit of height there on the way in so that wasn't very good I need to watch my speed so as you get to midpoint over the airport then you descend and you make a call Lancair whatever number it might be Lancair joining left midfield for runway 31 so everybody knows where you're coming did you spot that glider it just went under the windscreen on the left there if you download my airports watch out there are trikes and gliders at varying altitudes flying around within about 10 k's or 10 nautical miles of the airport so that's why it's vfr flying you've got to look outside okay let's get ourselves lined up we'll uh, take a left turn okay clear left and we'll turn left and these patches that you see ahead there um, they were put there when I had the last lot of scenery and because uh, there was black areas there you just notice those two strips I need to remove those so that we can actually see the the new ortho scenery so I'll do that uh, maybe this evening I've got to build an airport for one of my subscribers the guys from from the Philippines asked me if I'd build his island for him so we're going to build an airport on an island and uh, I think you might find that'll be out in the next couple of days as a video thought I might show you guys how to do that again with the overlay editor certainly one of my favorite tools okay turning base call the traffic Lanka turning left base for runway 31 so watching is watching my speed watching my altitude coming down to altitude height I want to start descending now at uh, remember the airport here is 1,600 100 1,165 feet well, I'm tangled my tongue and this thing is so quick I've ended up a fair way out so the airport is about uh, it's about 50 degrees to the left at the moment so we're going to turn left and final and you can see the the racetrack there it's a good good thing to look for to give you a bit of an idea where it is we've got a fair bit of flap happening here this does shake around a little bit you know it's it's quite unstable as you slow down so maybe I need to get a few more knots under my belt coming in on approach on this one you wondering all those trees I put there lots of trees needs needs a few more I think so turning on to final there not quite straight so call the traffic Lancair turning final for runway 31 call out nice shallow approach see it's, it's quite twitchy keeps wanting to roll left and or right we're training aircraft it just sits there rigidly as you fly in but uh, not something with a bit more performance so 
see how well we can get this in. At least I'm straight. Holding it level. Little bit of a flare there before it down. That was a bit firm. But not too bad. Anything you walk away from is a good one. Here we come again. So I've already got nose up a bit here and I, I didn't really transition from looking where I wanted to land to the end of the runway, which is what you should really do. And I try and do that as much as possible. So heading back and as always, keep a good look out left and right. Make sure there's no one doing cross wind takeoffs and landings. Any gliders flying around? You know, Wednesdays and Saturdays there's always gliders and lots of aircraft flying around Gawler. Let's taxi in. So I hope that was informative, guys. I know it's fairly similar to the previous video, but the big difference is power on and power off. And the most important thing is that you go out and practice it. You do your clearing turns. You check that you're in a safe area and make sure you have plenty of altitude when you start. And that power off is for practicing your landings if you haven't get distracted on landing and your power on stalls are all about takeoffs guys so you need to you need to be comfortable that you will react correctly because you'll already have been distracted by something no doubt that's why you get into these situations so until next time i look forward to catching you guys back here and let's fly vfr isn't this great? The leather is fantastic. Get the get the canopy open, let the breeze in. And now if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment uh, down the bottom of the video anytime, guys. More than happy to have a chat with you. Maybe some live streams coming up soon. So see you then. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.